If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before moving on. Our first step to solving this question is to draw in the currents in each loop of the circuit. You'll notice that we have two loops in the circuit. We have this upper loop right here and then the lower loop right there. So we'll have to draw in some currents. We also need to draw in a current for this section of the circuit right here. Now you'll notice that we've labeled the currents with the letter I and also with the subscript. So for example, I4 represents the current that would be flowing through the 4 ohm resistor. I2, of course, would be the current flowing through the 2 ohm resistor, and I6 is the current that flows ultimately through the 6 ohm resistor. I also would like to note that the direction of the current was arbitrarily chosen. In other words, we could have shown I4 traveling to the right, we could have shown I2 traveling to the left, or even I6 traveling up the loop instead of down. That choice is arbitrary. If it turns out that our choices are wrong, we can make some adjustments later in the question. But for now, we'll just guess and leave the currents in the directions that are shown. We will next apply Kirchhoff's junction rule. And to do that, we have to pick a junction. So why don't we look at this junction right here, and we'll notice that current 4 is flowing into that junction. Current 2, if we look carefully, is flowing out of the junction. Current 6 also is flowing out of the junction. If it helps to see, you can actually take that tail of the current and just trace it back a little bit. So hopefully we can see that current 6 is coming out of the junction. And the basic idea behind the junction rule is that the total current flowing out of the junction will equal the total current flowing in. In other words, we can say that I2 plus I6 is equal to I4. We will hold on to this equation and refer to it later. We will next apply Kirchhoff's loop rule, and to do that we have to select one of the loops that are present in the circuit. So for example, we can arbitrarily select a starting point right here, and what we're going to do is we're going to move around the lower loop of the circuit. So we would be traveling around in this fashion. So we could put in a couple of arrows just to remind ourselves which direction we're traveling in. So you can see that we're going in a counterclockwise direction around this loop. And as we go around that loop, we need to keep track of potential changes, delta Vs. And there are a couple of rules to keep in mind when we do this. Now, here are the rules. We're going to slow down and make some sense of them. There are two types of potential changes. There are positive potential changes and then negative potential changes. The red arrow indicates the direction that we would be moving. And we can see, for example, that if we're moving across a battery, from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, we consider that to be a positive potential change. Similarly, if we are moving against the direction of the current, which is shown with the purple arrow, that is also a positive potential change. On the other hand, if we move in the opposite direction, where we go from the positive to the negative terminal, that is a negative potential change. And when we are moving with the direction of the current, which again is the purple arrow, that is a negative potential change. For example, if we go back to our starting point and we move across the battery in this direction, we're going from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, and according to our rules, that would be a positive potential change, and the amount would be 8 volts. So we can begin to write the loop rule by writing 8 volts. We will omit writing in V for volts so that it doesn't confuse the equation. We're just going to use numbers as best as we can. As we continue along, we're going to encounter a resistor. Now we know across a resistor that the potential change is equal to the current times the resistance. We just have to figure out if that's a positive current times resistance or a negative current times resistance. Let's look back at our rules again. Notice we are moving in the direction that I6 is moving. I6 is moving counterclockwise, just like we are. So when we move with the current, that is a negative potential change. So we're going to have a negative current times resistance. The resistance is 6, and the current is signified by I6. So we're going to write into the equation a minus 6I6. Continuing counterclockwise through the loop, we encounter another resistance. So it's going to be another I times R. This time we're moving against the direction of the current. When we're moving against the direction of the current, that's a positive delta V change. So we're going to have a positive, and then the current is I2, the resistance is 2. So we'll have that resistance times that current of I2. We continue our way around this lower loop, and we return to the starting point. When we return to the starting point, the loop rule says to set that equal to 0. 
It turns out to be useful to solve this equation for I6. So let's add the I6 over to the right hand side. In fact, we'll add the 6I6 six over to the right hand side. We'll then divide each term of this equation by 6. So this will cancel that 6. We divide by 6 here, that will become 1 third. We divide this by 6, that will become 4 thirds. This equation for I6 we will hold on to and use later. Now we still have three unknowns and only two equations, so we need to apply another loop rule. We're gonna to go to the top loop this time. Let's arbitrarily start right here, and let's move in the counterclockwise direction again, so we're gonna kind of go around the loop this way, and we're going to keep track of the potential changes. So as we go through this resistor, we're flowing with the current, so that's going to be a negative potential change, and it will be equal to negative two times I2. We come around the loop and we are now encountering another resistor. Notice that we are flowing with the current of I4. If that's hard to see, you can extend the tail of I4 back a little bit and we are moving in the same direction as I4. So that's another negative potential change. It's going to equal four times I4. And then we encounter a battery and we're moving from the negative to the positive terminal. And so our rules say that that should be a positive potential change. It will equal 12 volts and then we return to where we started, so we set it equal to zero. We've cleaned up the workspace a little bit. Let's solve this equation for I4. So let's add that four I4 over to the right side, and then we can divide each term of the equation by four, so that we'll have three here and a minus one half here. Now, we have neatly solved I4 in terms of I2, as well as I6 in terms of I2, so we're going to make some substitutions. We're going to take this expression for I4 and plug it in to the first equation, and we'll take this expression for I6 and also plug it in to that first equation. So here is that substitution. Above each substitution, we've reminded us where they came from. So this bracketed term was I6, this bracketed term was I4. Notice, finally, we have an equation with just one variable in it, it's I2. So we can solve this equation for I2. Now that's a bit lengthy. What I would recommend doing is multiplying each term by six so we can clear fractions. So we're gonna multiply everybody by six. And you can probably use your calculator if you need to here. And when you multiply each term by six, you should obtain the following result, we've cleared fractions effectively here. Now we can just gather the I2 terms onto one side of the equation, so let's add this I2 over to the left side. We could then subtract eight from both sides. And finally, when you divide both sides by 11, you get I2 equaling 10 elevenths amps, which is approximately 0 0.909 amps. So that's the correct answer for I2. What's nice is that we've solved part A. Remember, we were trying to get the current through the two ohm resistor. Well, if we look at our diagram, which is right here again, I2 is the current that's flowing through this two ohm resistor. So this is indeed the correct answer to part A. Luckily, part B is a little bit easier to find the potential difference VB minus VA, which we remember, by the way, is the final potential minus the initial potential. What that means is we're going to initially start at A, so we're going to start right here, and we're going to move our way to a final position of B, which is over here. Now there are many paths we can take, but perhaps the easiest path is to start at A and to work our way in this manner. And the reason it's nice to go this way is because we only encounter one circuit element. That would be this resistor right here, the two ohm resistor. Now as we go through that two ohm resistor, we are going with the current. It's getting a little messy on the diagram, but hopefully you can see that we are going with the current. You can even back up a little bit. There's the current direction right there. So we're going with the current. It's a negative potential change, and it's going to be equal to whatever the current is, I2, multiplied by the resistance, which is two ohms. So notice again that as we go from point A through the two ohm resistor, we're going to successfully get to B. Now we already found I2, it's 0.909, so we just plug it in. And when we simplify that, we can see that the potential change is approximately negative 1.82 volts, and that is indeed the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.